Comedy is a strange and powerful thing. The power of comedy is so strong that in the olden days, the jester was the only one who could deliver bad news to the king or even mock his follies without fear of repercussion. In literature, the jester was a symbol of common sense and honesty, expressing truthful advice and commentary that would have had anyone else sent to the dungeon or even executed. In a sense, humor has always been sacred, putting the comedian above reproach. Of course, we now live in a very disjointed, reactionary society. It seems every day, senselessness pierces our phones and our television sets. We're fractured off from one another by the slightest disagreements. Our media and technology drive us further from one another, but also from who we are at our most base level. Meanwhile, trivial matters take up the bulk of our attention and moral crimes seem to disappear with no press whatsoever. But perhaps this is the reason to look to the jester once again. Aristotle taught that comedy was necessary for society because it brings forth happiness which he considered to be the ideal state and the desired conclusion to any activity. The Greeks classified every story as either a comedy or a tragedy, and Mark Twain expanded upon that idea, stating humor is tragedy plus time. Comedy is the universal language. It's a way to connect and let our guards down. At its most basic level, anyone can understand and share in it. Unlike the gestures of old, Nowadays, no one is immune from scrutiny or backlash, and this is not completely a bad thing. Accountability and more empathy will lead to a better world, but on the other hand, it's not completely a good thing either. Let's take 1930s America. For the majority of the populace, Hitler wasn't such a bad guy, and to the rest, he was a feared figure not to be trifled with. Famed comedian Charlie Chaplin, however, saw Hitler for the threat he was, and he used the power of comedy to expose Hitler's intentions and lower him to a weak, farcical character. No one in the US was willing to touch the film, so Chaplin financed it entirely on his own. The great dictator foreshadowed the imprisonment and eventual extermination of the Jewish people, Hitler's megalomania, and his eventual plans for world domination. Chaplin never referred to Hitler or the Nazis by name, rather using mocking monikers. For example, Goebbels became Herr Garbage Vincent. Herr Garbage. However, Chaplin retained the real life names of the victims and the process. By doing so, he obliterated the power of the oppressors while remaining sympathetic to the oppressed. If Chaplin had been censored, one of the most fearless, prophetic, and revolutionary performances of all time would not exist. By the way, both the U.S. and the U.K. used the film as war propaganda once it served their purpose. This proves that an unpopular or feared opinion should never be silenced. It's up to the audience to decide the merits or morals of the comedy. But the audience would decide whether you're uh, uh, an objectionable comic or even a good comic, you know? Now, I'm not saying all comedy is created equal, but the power of comedy and expression is needed for us to comprehend one another. It's needed for us to become a happier, more understanding culture. It's something we all have in common from the dawn of our existence. Most of us, most of us, most of us, most of us, most of us. Most of Looking to the jester can allow us to see a side we didn't perceive prior. Whether it's simplistic or lighthearted or deep, dark gallows humor, it all serves multiple functions. It's too no, much. I think, too I'm not thinking you, anything, no. You I think it's great. You ticked off. None. It can show us issues that are often ignored by mainstream thought. She is schizophrenic. <laughs> well, clearly that is not my mental illness. It can bring us together in ways we wouldn't discover on our own. Fucking boring, this guy. <laughs> That's my new character, the guy that gets bored automatically. It can give us insight into something we as a culture may be thoughtlessly partaking in at a certain time without realizing. Nationalism does nothing but teach you how to hate people that you never met and all of a sudden you take pride in accomplishments you had no part in whatsoever and you it can point out ignorance and blindness in our society yeah well of course you want kentucky i mean that's where all the racists are <laughs> all of them are in kentucky 
It can teach us to embrace the absurdity of life. What's up, bro, Tendo? I was thinking about getting my foreskin sewn back on, because I haven't candy flipped this hard since I got adult circumcised, bro. <laughs> Fresh, you got a pretty sick style. You want to butt chug some jankum? It can refocus our perspective on ourselves and away from the distractions. But if you search for moral wisdom in Katy Perry's lyrics, then kill yourself. It won't be painful if you are able to give a little kiss to it. It can disrupt us from our apathy and contentment in the commonplace. It can be used as a weapon to hijack power from evil and leave it as a pathetic farce. And most of all, it can simply make us happy. Maybe that's all we really need in such a mad, cruel world. To return to what Aristotle declared centuries ago, the ideal state. The power of comedy has always been there for us to draw upon, and in this time of sickness and destruction, perhaps laughter truly is the best medicine. Mm -hmm.